Hey and bienvenido, welcome to my channel, the place to talk about the art of personal growth and development. I want to share with you guys today my spiritual journey. And I also want to talk to you guys about what is spirituality, what are the signs that you're currently going through a spiritual awakening. And like I mentioned, I want to share with you my experiences during my spiritual journey. So what is a spiritual awakening? First of all, the term spiritual awakening is used to describe a period in your life when you finally kind of wake up and begin to discover who you are at the core of yourself. What are your true values? What do you want to do in life and in the world? Um, something that is a lot more deep than how you've been used thinking about yourself in your in relation to other people so like almost imagine like you're going through life and there comes a point in time where it almost feels like a blindfold came off and you're now thinking about things that matter to you on a much deeper level of who you are and like once that blindfold is removed then now it's when the real personal growth and development really starts looking back how i began my journey into spirituality was through self-help and it's always been that an outside event kind of pushes me to better myself and I just keep going deeper and deeper and it doesn't always necessarily have to be like an outside event that is pushing you I just noticed for me and I'll tell you more a little bit um, later on in this video but it's always been like there's been an outside event that pushed me to really evaluate everything in my life and that's how I began to get into spirituality. So how do you know if you are going through your own spiritual awakening? You're gonna have many of these signs and this list is by no means like all-encompassing. There could be many other uh, behaviors that I haven't listed because we all have a different way of experiencing life of course but I think overall the signs I'm gonna give you are gonna be pretty like spot on about the things that you're gonna feel. Some signs that you're going through a spiritual awakening is you start to question your own values. You start to question the things that you care about in life and whether you should be caring about them or not. And along those lines you're gonna notice that you start to lose interest in the material world and by that I mean instead of caring about like clothing and how much money you make maybe you now care more about developing who you are or becoming more aware of who you are. You start to notice how unhappy you and other people are with the way that we're living our lives and you start to question whether those are the right ways in which we should be living. And you really start to question everything. You start to notice that the things that you've been taught to value are not that valuable at all and you start to kind of decide what you should be valuing instead. You now want to find what is your purpose in life. You want to find how you can help make the world a better place. You start to become aware of your own negative ways of behaving or negative patterns that you carry throughout your life or your own thinking and you start to figure out how you can change them or at least decide that you want to change them. You might start to feel disconnected to the people around you and might even start feeling alone even though you're surrounded by people. People have previously made you feel like they're on the same wavelength as you but now you're starting to notice that that's not happening anymore. You might start noticing that you're becoming more in tune with your intuition or maybe even notice that you have like psychic abilities and you begin to notice that everything is connected and you feel more compassionate for all living beings and like i said these are not like definitive signs you could have many other signs or different variations of these signs but i guess the overall theme is that you begin to really evaluate what are the things that matter to you what are your core values who are you really and how can you serve the world for the better so if you find that you're experiencing many of the things I just mentioned, you're definitely going through a spiritual awakening. <laughs> and the reason why I feel like many people are going to be going through their spiritual awakening right now is because we, we're being forced to be alone. And when you're alone, you really have nothing but your own thoughts. Unless you're distracting yourself with like sex or drugs or... I don't know, some other kind of escapist um, activity, most likely you're gonna be home and kind of start to notice more and more about yourself. 
So let me tell you my experience and see if maybe you can get something from it and see if you relate to anything that I went through. And because like I said, yeah, it's really kind of an odd experience that until you start to begin to do research about it, most of us don't really have the language to kind of communicate what's going on. So how I started my spiritual journey. I first of all I always I feel like I always was a spiritual person. I just didn't know. Like I said, I didn't know the language and I had the wrong understanding of what it was. As I told you guys in my old videos, I was born in Costa Rica in Latin America and I was raised Catholic. The reason why I say I was always spiritual is because when I was a little kid, like I was always drawn to religion and like symbols of religion. Like I said, I was raised Catholic and I would go to like catechism and stuff like that, did my first communion and I would always be the one telling my mom to go to church because I felt like number one, it's like something you have to do and number two, because I honestly enjoyed it. I remember back in Costa Rica when you went to, I don't when you went to church like um the mass was really happy like it was a kids mass so we had like people dancing and music and people would clap and they, there were a lot of kids in that mass and so it was like a really joyful experience for me but looking back i also noticed i was really drawn to like religious symbols like i remember we would walk through um i don't know what it's called here but like you know like it's like a high school and it's run by nuns it's like a private religious school we had one of those on the way to the park where the church was and I would always like be so drawn to this uh, school and I knew like I wanted to go there because nuns were teaching and I always wanted to like help out at church and I wanted to be like an altar girl, can you be an altar girl? Thank god I never was because now we know it's like full of pedophilia but I always wanted to just be close to, to to the experience of going to church and I guess God by extension. When I started walking away from religion was sometime in middle school when by then I had moved to Nicaragua and Nicaragua was the same thing. A lot of people are religious and I went to a private school there. So we had our religion class and <laughs> I don't know why I had this crazy religion teacher and I remember her one time going like really crazy like yelling at us and telling us she was i guess she was talking about evolution at the time but i remember her just yelling at the top of her lungs like how are you gonna tell me that we come from monkeys do you think i look like a monkey i want you to tell me to my face if you think i look like a monkey and i swear to god <laughs> and i swear to god i wanted so badly to be like yeah i, I kind of do think we look like monkeys but like I knew better because she was fucking crazy. <laughs> but what really started to bother me about religion was like, religion is so based on fear, especially when I was a kid. They would tell us all kinds of like weird comments. They would tell us like, number one, you have to pray every night and if you don't pray, you're gonna go to hell, right? And like, you can imagine as a little kid, I was like, the days like I fell asleep without praying, I would be like so scared. And it began to bother me that then I began to pray out of fear. I no longer, it was no longer like, oh, I want to go to church. It was like, oh, I need to pray so I don't go to hell. And it really began to bother me that, um, like I remember there'd be nights where like I'd be praying and I would just try to get through the prayer because I just didn't want to go to hell and I just wanted to fall asleep so it really began to bother me on that level that I didn't want to do it out of fear and it didn't feel like true if I did it out of fear and then what also really started to bother me was in school when we began to learn about dinosaurs um, and how do you reconciliate the idea of dinosaurs with religion which obviously you can't and, and so many so little by little i began to walk away from the idea of religion and by the time that i moved to nicaragua and i would go to the mass um it was like really dreary so i didn't even have that as an enjoyable experience so even though i did my first communion um by the time that i did it i was no longer interested in anything having to do with religious and i really just finished it because i felt like i had to um, I mean, I, I didn't have a choice, my mom sent me, but you know what I mean, like I, 
I knew by then that like it didn't really mean anything to me. So by the time I moved to the U.S., like there was never any anything about religion for me ever again. Um, even though my grandma's very religious, she never made me thank God. She never made me go to a church with her. Yeah, I just never. Ha I never went to church again. I never experienced like. By then, I had given up on praying because I felt like it was just a lie. And yeah, and once I was in the U.S. and the idea of not practicing religion was like normal, then that kind of made me feel like it was okay, and that I wasn't gonna go to hell anymore. <laughs> But yeah, after that, it would be a long time until like I started to work on myself through the tools of self-help. And what started happening is little by little, I began to work on myself. Halfway through college, I dropped out. Um, and that's when I kind of realized I dropped out because I wasn't having a good experience. And I kind of realized like, this is what being an adult is. It means that I can make my own choices. And if I don't like it here, I can go back home and like choose a new school and so that's when i became aware that like you can start to change your mind you can train your mind you're in control of yourself and that's when i started little by little getting into self-help and i actually made a video about that experience of leaving college and i think it's still on my youtube um for uog subscribers that may or may not remember I remember back then I started to read just little by little self-help books. I remember reading like the Four Agreements. I remember doing some stuff with like the Enneagram system. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that was, but like little by little I started learning more about how to be a better person. Um, eventually I went back to partying again and um, I made the mistake of thinking that kind of like drugs was a way of kind of exploring who you are and so that kind of distracted me for a little bit and while i feel like psychedelic drugs can definitely help you understand yourself um looking back i now feel like you're always left kind of chasing that first amazing experience and it's very rare that you have an experience like that again where like like it's a true journey into who you are and i mean i haven't done like acid or mushrooms or anything so maybe that's not that's maybe that is possible with those drugs i don't know but i'm just saying for me eventually i realized like i need to go back to self-help and i wanted to learn more and more and i remember um i remember i had a, like a negative experience with the guy that i was kind of seeing and that pushed me into like learning more about like codependence and um just dynamics and how to relate to a, with other people romantic or otherwise and so little by little again started taking that the more and more steps towards self-help but when i really had my big spiritual awakening was in 2014 when i came back to la from mississippi and for those of you that are new to my channel i spent like six or seven months in mississippi because I was doing Teach for America and I left because you should not join Teach for America and I also made a video about that. <laughs> but anyway, so what happened when I came back from Mississippi is I began to really examine like who am I and I was now for the first time living alone because up to that moment in time I had always had like a roommate. At the time what happened is I got a job in Santa Monica and I was living in East LA and for those of you guys that don't live in LA, like traffic is horrendous. So it should be a 30 minute drive at most with traffic during rush hour becomes like an hour to an hour and a half, especially at the end of the day. So what I started to do was start doing yoga right after, uh, right after work. So that way like traffic died down and I could drive home at like seven or eight o'clock at night, which by then traffic is like way better and unbeknownst to me this is basically what triggered my spiritual awakening but what happened is my first day of yoga um i feel like i had a kundalini awakening and which is a whole nother weird experience and and also the reason it took me so long to like make this kind of videos because it's such a weird experience when you go through anything like related to spirituality and I feel like half of you are not gonna like it and I feel like the other half is gonna be like, what the fuck? And so, but whatever. <laughs> I 
I'm, re I'm finally ready to share my story. Okay. So anyway, my first day of yoga class, what happened is I had a Kundalini awakening and I had no idea, I had no idea what the fuck that was at the time, but it was kind of like a domino effect where like that really like accelerated my spiritual growth and um, kind of pushed me to do research and learn more about it. Excuse me if I'm saying this wrong. Your your feminine energy is awakened and it moves in a spiral motion from the bottom of your spine through the top. I was in this squat position when, and the teacher told us to close our eyes for a second and all of a sudden I began to get really like hot, like feel really hot and I felt that energy that I'm talking telling you about. I felt like all of a sudden I felt like an energy going through me and I felt like I couldn't breathe and I felt also very dizzy to the point where and like I felt very dizzy as well to the point where like I literally had to like open my eyes just so that I could breathe because all of a sudden like my breath started to get really like short or I guess I should say shallow and just the whole experience was kind of like scary I never, I never felt like energy moving through me like that before and so I had no idea what it was and not only did I almost fall over to the side but now I can't breathe but I also felt like somehow people might see that I'm like doing something totally weird so it was like it was like a weird situation where like I literally had to stop and just breathe and like reassure myself that like no one has any idea what's going on and no one has noticed anything and I kept going um, and this is what really triggered me to start doing research about it because I felt like I couldn't let go of that experience like I couldn't kind of process it I didn't understand what it was and that's when I started to read about spirituality and your spiritual awakening and um, I remember one of the first few classes as well with another teacher at that same studio probably like a week later if not the same week I remember um, feeling a similar energy when I met that teacher and I felt like literally like now I know because I did the research that it was my heart chakra was opening and all I felt was like another surge of energy and I felt almost like um, almost like when you're falling in love with somebody but then I later learned it's just your heart is awakening um, and learning to connect through to other people's hearts and again it was such a weird experience that I just had to research it and learn more about it once I began to do this research about spirituality and all of these like energy that's when I started to really get um, really interested in reading books about spirituality and learning about your soul about who you are um, and i've had more weird spiritual experiences from that time that i'll probably share in another video let me know if you want to hear them <laughs> they're kind of weird and i haven't shared any of this because i feel like most of you are just gonna think i'm weird and the other half of you are just gonna like not be interested so let me know if this kind of topic is interesting to you and I'll make more videos about it because I know I'm not the only one going through them and to understand what you go through you kind of have to sometimes hear what other people are going through as well so um, and that's when I started to realize that I had moments in the past where like um, I had some kind of I had almost like psychic abilities um, but I didn't understand that they actually were psychic um, abilities and I can now make sense of them so a lot of stuff started to come into like um, into clarity when I began to go through my spiritual awakening in 2014 and um, so yeah so this was back in 2014 and I remember that year specifically like I was so into doing yoga I was meditating a lot having weird experiences during meditation and just learning more about it helped me make sense of like all the weird experiences that I was going through so that's why I'm making this video in case you're going through some weird experiences right now the reason I stopped doing yoga was because as a dancer I just felt like it didn't have enough movement I didn't enjoy how sedentary is not the right word but like you know you put your mat and you're never gonna lift off that mat like I mean you could be on your hands but 
like I'm used to like moving around the room kind of thing and so when I found kickboxing it just really felt like okay this is more for me and kickboxing for me is also a way to access my own spirituality and myself because number one when you're kickboxing you have to empty your mind very similarly than like when you're meditating except the only difference is you're moving your body <laughs> And there's a person trying to hit you <laughs> and you're trying to hit them um, but when I found kickboxing that kind of I know it sounds weird but kickboxing for me is one of my spiritual practices um, and that's what I'm really missing during this whole quarantine but at the same time like I just kind of have to surrender and know that the universe is kind of giving us a moment to again go deep into our spiritual practices our more traditional spiritual practices and so i've been again reading and trying to work on myself so for me 2016 17 and 18 um i did a lot less spiritual work because i felt like i was doing most of it during kickboxing and i feel like i got really lazy about reading books like i don't think I would be surprised if I read a single book in one of those years but what I definitely did um, was once I found audiobooks it took me a long time to find not, not just find audiobooks but like find out how to play audiobooks in your car um, that that was a game changer for me so the last year I read for the first time in years I mean I read like five or six books in the span of like four or five months like it was awesome and so for me audiobooks have been really life-changing and a way that i've been really working on myself of course up until this quarantine because now i'm actually like reading like i'm trying to catch up on all the books that i still have to finish um now that we have so much time on our hands but i guess what i'm trying to share is that there is no perfect way of doing your spiritual work there are going to be times in your life when you're more focused on it there are going to be times where you're more experimental and actually trying out like the things that you want to like the behaviors you want to change or the, you, the areas in your life where you want to level up and there's going to be other times in your life when you're gonna be really focused on it and your growth is just going to be like accelerated and I honestly feel like this coronavirus for many people, especially for those of us that are lucky enough to be healthy, is going to probably be a period of acceleration in your spiritual growth. And yeah, it might be painful. You might be feeling a lot of weird things, going through weird experiences. So let me know in the comments if you've been feeling anything out of the ordinary or what you've been noticing about how your growth is going during quarantine I just wanted to share my story in case it helps anybody I know that at the time that I was going through my big spiritual awakening I felt really alone because you suddenly kind of level up and the people that you hang out with don't always are not always on that same spiritual path as you and you begin to feel a disconnect with people that you before felt very connected with so like I said if you are just trying to learn more about your situation um i want to make this video for you so thank you for watching if you still are subscribe if you like to continue talking about world domination and let me know in the comments what has been your experience with your spiritual growth and if you want me to make more of these kinds of videos i definitely want to make a video about like when i've experienced divine intervention it's kind of controversial so i don't know let me know what you think about it and i'll see you in the next one